Okay. Uh, and you know what? We always wonder that which one of this is really more important. Yeah. When you enter your PhD, your first goal post is typically get my grades very well done and get my comprehensive exam. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Typically, that is a, a standard mind frame with which 80% of the people around the world, not us only, around the world, people focus on coursework, let me get rid of it, let me pass the comprehensive exam, then I will start thinking. Right? Yeah. No. no. Somebody said no. Me. Okay. Yeah, but let's say go ahead and act. If you don't have so much of a proposal, there's no comprehensive exam. Before the exam is the proposal. Before starting. So there is a catch. Yeah, it is a proposal. For me, I, I just I was thinking that what I was doing PhD before starting PhD, I just discussed this. Okay. I don't know what proposal it is, but I just want to know what will I work on. That's okay. 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 So tell me, why did you take admission in PhD? I might have asked it last time also, I asked it again. Why? To enhance your, no. your knowledge, which philosophically is okay, but also get a terminal degree that can get you a better job. Yes. Right? Of course. That helps a lot. But uh, whenever you plan to enter into something, if you enter blindly, without putting proper thought process into it, then you don't know which path to choose. You don't know how best to choose your advisor. You don't know how to progress in your PhD. That's why people say, get mature enough, smart enough, strong enough, before you really decide what area you would like to do your PhD in and why. Forget the professional part that you will grow professionally. Forget that part. What is more important is that you will live a life for four years and that life should be fun, should be challenging. Peace. So that, that part of the life should be challenging and fun. But how can, you, how can you even think that that will be challenging and fun? Unless you don't know what you would like to do in a PhD. You want a PhD degree, but if you don't know what you want to do, then you are not passionate. You have to have that inner passion that I am wanting to get this degree because I have an idea and I want to take this idea to the next level and when we talk about the next level we are talking about PhD level not masters level not undergraduate level not senior project level but PhD level how many of you seriously seriously thought about a topic before starting your PhD or before getting admission into PhD. Okay, let's say 20% of you thought about it. How many of you are really following that dream? Let me rephrase the question. How many of you thought of an idea of a project and are right now working on that project? No one. Not completely, but around that. A little bit. But let me tell you, this is the real world. This is the real world. Why? It's not easy. Supervisor. <laughs> you know we love our supervisors. It's distractions actually. Yeah. Distraction. Maybe the idea was not polished. Now I don't know. Disappointing. 
disappointed. Oh, that's that's yeah. Please switch off your phone. Once again, another chance. Please switch off your phones if they're on. Okay. Yeah. I had like a, a picture. I'm coming from a food safety uh, background, so I had a clear picture of what I wanted to do like before coming into the like PhD topic. And after that, I realized that there are so many things to learn during that process. Meaning, when I wanted to come up with a new topic, to do that, I have to learn so many things. And bringing up a new topic and adding to the knowledge is not like easy as it looks. Like before that, I thought that it would be like, like just, yeah, magic. <laughs> magic, yes. Somebody else was adding? Yes, sir. Uh, for my point of view, that maybe the system of the university here is a little bit, maybe the, uh, for example, the courses. I see it as an obstacle for, the, for, for, for me. Uh, to, to start working with, uh, for my PhD subject. Mm -hmm. So, I, as you said in the beginning, I want to get rid of these courses and then I will clearly mind it to start Focus on research. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is what, uh, what I feel like knowing. I want to just finish these courses and they will start working on this my PhD. Okay. Anybody else wants to add anything to it? And most probably these courses will really add to your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're more like a distraction. They're just keeping you away. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it to the... Uh, to, 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 who, where is the College of Graduate Studies yeah. representative sitting <laughs> 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 Did you hear it? No. Okay. Okay. One more. One more. Okay. Quick. It's just in addition to what they're saying about getting rid of the courses, um, some, some of them I feel like are not related to the faculty that you're studying in. Um, in fact, now, I'm not learning anything. I'm just cramming so that I can pass. So I'm not enjoying learning the course. Cramming is not what PhD is all about. No, but it, it's just the intensity because it's not matching with, because I'm from Food and Agriculture, and I'm taking a statistics course whereby it's full of engineering students, and they're talking engineering. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't Welcome, lady, to the world of PhD. <laughs> If it does not keep your mouth open like ah, what has happened? <laughs> it's not PhD. But I'm not. I'm not. I feel like I'm not learning. I'm just trying to pass the homework. Yes. But I'm not learning. Okay. Eventually you will. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Let it sink in. Eventually you will. But whatever you said about the twenty percent students we just now talked about, right? Yeah. This is nothing unusual. It's a very, very normal thing. Why? Let me explain to you why. You had an idea, and you thought this is the best idea in the world. But take two steps back and become a little bit humble. With that humility, try to think, were you mature enough to, sell, to identify the idea that you identified to be the real research topic going forward. Many times we are just starting our career and many times we don't exactly know what is involved in doing that particular type of research. So I'm not saying that the idea is not bad. It is that the maturity is still not there to be able to correctly mold that idea into something really solid, something that can form the pillar, central pillar of your, of your dissertation. So it's okay. It's okay, but at least you thought. The very fact that you think about what I would like to do in PhD puts you on the right path that you are thinking. PhD is all about thinking. Not your supervisor who should be thinking. Okay, the other thing that could be is because the supervisor who you chose or who you got. Yes. Yeah. Okay, both things. So let's be honest about it. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah on that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the supervisor, let's say you got 
uh, happens not to work directly on what you want to do. And even if he or she wants you to pursue your dream, he or she cannot for a couple of reasons. Firstly, that is not his or her idea, or, or that's not his or her field. They don't do research on that, so they will say, you know what, please align yourself with what I am doing, and I have got A, B, and C, choose something from this, please. Now, wh why does the supervisor say such a thing? Because of the funding. They got funding just for that. Funding is at the foundation of a lot of decisions that are made in the university environment. Now, I might be loving a certain research area, but if I don't have funding to pursue it, I cannot do it. So don't be dejected when, the, uh, when your professor says, you know what, please align yourself with what research I'm doing because I have got funding for this particular research. Okay? But because you have been thinking, you can start thinking one more idea. So it was very important that some of you are thinking about ideas because then you can align yourself to that particular area and then find some silver lining in it. And that can be a project. So this is how you start thinking about it. But then coming back to comprehensive exam as my first goal. Good. Because the system is like that. In 80% of the cases, you have to get your comprehensive exams off. But like these medical students said, that they have to make sure that their proposal is ready by the time or before. You submit it and you do the comprehensive exam on it. So, this is very important to understand. Now what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that typically when you enter PhD, I know you have to attend the courses. You have to be a biologist in between engineers. You have to cram. Courses are a distraction. Everything is okay. But this is the package. This is the deal that you got. And you accept it. You accept it. But the most important thing is start thinking about research from day one. If you postpone your research thought process till the end of your comprehensive exam, I'm sorry to say some of you might be very smart, I salute you, but most of you will be doomed. And I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be negative, but I want to be very honest and straightforward to you that if you have not started thinking about your research from day one, then you're lost. Yes, sir. Uh, what is considered to be a, a PhD research? And what is it? You should know that. Yeah. Because you entered into it. Yeah, but sometimes you suggest some ideas, and they say this is not. And some people, some other uh, scholars say yes. Yeah. So you're confused. Some people say, the, say yes, it can, and some others. So there yeah. are some that can be. Yes. And then you can make it better and better till it gets to where it but is accepted. Is there any uh, specific rules in selecting uh, a topic? No. No, 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 no. There is, there is no specific rules. Specific rules is your passion for a particular area alignment with your professor, and the availability of funding. These are the three things that determine what you will be doing as you go forward. And if you don't feel that you are fitting into it, out. If you have the luxury to do so, out completely. So those are the things that determine. But keep thinking. What is most important is start thinking right away from day one and how to do that? 
For example, you thought of an idea that this should potentially be my research project. Okay, come, I'm a supervisor. Oh no, that's a bad thing. <laughs> I don't want to be based on your apprehensions. <laughs> come and talk to the supervisor about it. Now, how do you go and talk? Okay. You need to read and find the literature about the, the area of your major and find the gaps and stuff from the gaps. Okay, anybody else? I read about the uh, profile of the advisor to whom I want to do. Ah, you're profiling the advisor, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I did. It's a good thing. Anybody else? Ask our students. Ask, ask your peers, ask your colleagues. That's, that's fine. But I think so, these are the most important things. If you have an idea, start doing your research already from day one. If you go and sit in front of your advisor or the advisory committee, always have an advisory committee. I'll talk about advisory committee also and its significance. When you sit in front of the advisory committee, you should not look dumb. Because if you go and say, I would like to do this thing, <laughs> if you come to me, I will say, go and do it. Go. But it doesn't work like that. What you have to do is you have to read thoroughly about that area. How to read thoroughly about that area? Where to start? You have a topic in mind, you have a research in, in your mind and you really want to do it and you want to make sure that I go and talk with my supervisor about it and I want to prepare myself. The question is, how to prepare yourself? Hmm? Read about it. Read about it. How to, how to, how to read about it? Literature. 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 Latest research. If you want to start searching on that topic, so, what you need to do is, you should start 2019. Okay? Yeah. Remember this thing. You should start 2019 and start pulling out publications that have been published in that particular year and then sort them out into two groups. Or maybe three, let's say three groups. What are those three stacks? One, that are directly related to the idea, directly related. At least 10 papers, at least 10 papers. Another 10 publications that support that area. They may not be directly related, but they support that area, okay? And your third stack should be another six to seven to eight publications that are reviews. Now, 2019, you may not find so many reviews, okay? At least five. At least five reviews. Now, these three stacks are very, very, very important. The question is, where should we start? So first realize that this stack for 2019 is very, very important. And you have to invest one month to read these articles. I've given you 25 articles to read in one month. There's a reason behind it. The articles that are directly related, skim through it. When I say that read them, does not mean that read every line of it. Why? You will not understand it. I guarantee you, you will not understand it. And after reading the first one, either you will sleep or you will be frustrated and not sleep the whole night. Okay? That's a reality. I've slept. I said I don't understand anything about it and I wanted to do research in it and I don't get it. If that happens, feel good. Because this is the first time you are coming to know, oh, I don't even know about it. That's a very good sign. 
If you don't know about things, it's a very good sign because you are telling yourself, I don't know, I need to know more. That's a very good sign of a learner, a person who learns. Okay? Reading articles is an art. Read the abstract, find something, always keep a notebook on the side. Always keep a notebook on the side. And just because you have some idea in your mind, based on that idea, put something and take some of the things and take a note on your notebook. It could be possible that the thing that you are noting down, you understand it. It could be possible that you don't understand it, but still you are noting it down. The very fact that you are writing something is you are engaged. Engagement is the beginning of learning. Okay? Engagement is the beginning of learning. And once you start reading the first paper, just go through the abstract. Don't miss the introduction. Read the conclusion. Why am I not saying that, okay, read the methods, materials and methods and, and, and uh, results? You will not understand it. You will not. And I don't want you to be frustrated. Okay? I don't want you to be frustrated. So just read it. If you feel that, okay, I'm getting it, only then go to discussion. Don't even read any other part. And discussion, just skim through it. How many of you, you read novels? Come on. Come on, come on. I don't believe that. Whenever you're doing your PhD, you should have something going on on the side. <laughs> to keep you alive. <laughs> okay? Uh, anyway, so first paper, done. Don't leave it at night on your bedside. Otherwise, you will be frustrated. Okay? Because everything over there will come in your dreams too. Okay? And it will haunt you all the time. So don't do that. But having done one paper and having written down even five lines boosts your confidence, I did it. So do it. And once you have done the next day at least two more papers. One from part one and one immediately go to the review. Why am I emphasizing review? Review gives an overview, a bigger picture of what is happening in that particular area. And critical reviews. Don't read crappy reviews. Okay? There are reviews that are published in good journals. Always pick top journals. And you might say, well, I don't know which is top and which is not. You will learn. Don't worry if you do mistakes. Don't worry at all. But pick one review and one main stream article. Next day, do that. Slowly, slowly, keep the two piles going and then move to the pile in the middle. Why? Because now you are developing some understanding of the subject area and the thing that is made around that area, now you can get from your middle pile. Okay? And after reading that, and again, skim, just skim through it, it's not necessary. Then put it aside and look at your notebook and see how much have you learned out of it. Now, comprehensive exam, I'm suddenly jumping. Three semesters? Or four semesters? Mm -hmm. Don't take the maximum, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll finish the PhD in seven years. <laughs> Minimum three. Because we cannot count. Okay, let's let's focus on three. Three semesters, okay? Three semesters, whatever number of months it takes, let's say eighteen months, because I'm I'm including 
PhD students don't have holidays, okay? No holidays. No summer, no break, no nothing. So six, uh, uh, 18 months, right? One month, you have already developed a concept. The most important thing is you have pushed yourself to understand the subject matter a little bit. You have developed the taste. You know what is happening. That is the time you start building on it. If you feel that the thought that you had when you wanted to do your PhD is matching with what you read in the first month, it is helping you directly to build. But if you feel that what you thought was an illusion and what is published in the literature is something very different, that is also very good. Why? Because you are disillusioned. Whatever you were thinking was way off the track. It's never wrong, okay? It's never wrong. You never know two centuries from now somebody will pick up that idea and try to prove it again. So never say that the concepts are wrong or totally baseless. So one month, extraordinary amount of work is done and you have some idea. Now don't start jumping like monkeys that, oh well I found it. No, no, just take it easy. Now you know what direction to take from this point on. And the two piles on the side will help you most, not the middle one. Use the review side more than this side. Why? Why do I say that use the review pile more than the mainstream pile? The review pile has got a treasure and that treasure is in the references. Okay? Read the review articles very carefully, every word. You see, I said the mainstream, skim it. But the review articles, read everything. And then pick out things from there where you feel that these are the areas that are more pertinent. Okay? And then choose out the next level of articles that are published in the past three years based on the references that you will find in the review articles. Okay? Based on the references that you find in the review articles, then go for three years, uh, uh, the articles that are published in the previous three years. So that develops another pile, which will add to the first, which will add to your additional reviews, and a few in the middle. After you have done two months of study of this level, suddenly you have a clear idea of what is happening in the field in which you are trying to enter. Now this is very, 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 very important for you to develop your foundation, to develop your understanding that where is the field going? What is the horizon? Where is the sun rising in your area? You should know about it. And that is the beginning when you start thinking about your research proposal. That is the beginning. That is the first day when you start thinking about your research proposal. Before that, you had thoughts that you want to do this, but now you are informed loaded with the latest research in your area, you know better what to do. At the same time, you know better what is going on in the lab, what, what your supervisor is doing, and you know better how best to align. Now your goal should always be that, okay, I don't want to just pick up one more topic and repeat some of the things. I told you this thing earlier also, that research does not mean that if something has been done in South Africa, or something has been done in Japan, or something has been done in New Zealand, let us also do it in UAE. That is not research. 
that is repeating the things. Research, there has to be some innovation in it. There has to be some new discovery in it. There has to be some element that can tell you that, you know what, I did something unique. I added to the volume of the data that is available. But to be able to see whether what now I know and whether what I want to do fits into the lab where I'm working. And some of you don't have labs, okay? Some of you are coming from humanities or from law or from other places. There are no labs. But there is a thought process over there. In business school, now the departments are like labs, okay? But equally important when you're doing all this reading is every day, I know you will say, my classes are tiring me. Too much material is coming. I need to go and study. I need to do every this and that for my classes. You have to, if you have labs, you have to go to the lab already from day one and have your office in the lab. I know some of you are sitting in, in, uh, in places where there are cubicles and they are far away from the labs or even in other buildings you are sitting other than your labs. That is not the most uh, productive and thought evoking place to sit. Although it is good that you have a cubicle and you can sit over there and write, but make it a point that every day we just enter the lab and spend at least one to two hours over there to see what is going on. Get a feel of it. It's like touching, if, if, if you're working with animals, like touching animals and understanding what the animal is all about. So this PhD is a beast. But you need to touch it and feel it and understand it, that's what it is. And understanding it only from the books is a myth. You have to go and live that life in order to be able to, to understand what it is about. And in the lab, what to do? There's another PhD student. Maybe there is a postdoc. Maybe there is a research assistant. And then there is the supervisor. Sometimes the supervisor will see and ask you, and this is a reality, okay? Sometimes the supervisor, what are you doing over here? Why are you here? You should be attending your courses. I, what would I do is I would be shameless, yes. I just want to be here just to see what can I do and I can help with. I remember that when students came to my lab, especially undergraduate students and even PhD students, I rarely had master's students. The first thing I told them, okay, you really want to work? They say, yes, yes, I'm committed to work. Okay, all the dishes have to be washed by you. And there was this like, oh my God. I didn't come over here to wash dishes. I want to do a PhD. But dear friends, if you don't know how to wash dishes, you have no right to be in the lab. If you don't, just like you, if you don't know how to read research articles, you have no right to do a PhD. Exactly that way, you have to get a feel of the lab. And it starts with the dishing. If your dishes are not clean, all your experiments will be doomed. So people did not understand why I used to kick people to go and wash dishes. And I used to make them do it for two weeks. They miss one day, I added one week to them. I was harsh. But then the students realized, my goodness, if I did not know that the small little thing sticking on the side of the petri dish had to be removed and cleaned so nicely and how the petri dishes had to be uh, sterilized and all those things, then all the experiments go wrong. 
but it takes time to realize sometimes that harsh things are actually meant good in the long run. So be in the lab, because by being in the lab, you will see what research is going on. You will get a real feel of the research going on. You'll be able to communicate with other students, which is very important, what they are doing, what their project is. You will make friends with the RA, because the RA might be doing part of your work, which I don't believe in. I like to do my work by myself. I never had a technician in my lab on purpose. There was a reason that ev I wanted everybody to be accountable for themselves. That if a mistake has happened, there's only one person, and it's me. So by being in the lab, you will get a feel of how things work, what is where, and be an assistant to somebody over there. OK? Be an assistant to somebody. That way, you will start getting into rhythm of the lab environment. I do not propose people to go to the lab, OK, I've done my comprehensive, now I want to be in the lab. That means you are way back in your race, several laps back in your race. So for God's sake, enter the lab right in the beginning. Just be there. Spend an hour or two every day over there. If it is weekends and if people are working during weekends, come and tell them, I'm here to help. Just use me, please. Even if they call you a slave, be a slave. It's OK. What is most important is to learn the culture of work in a lab environment. Those who do not have labs, they have working groups, right? They have working groups. And those working groups are their labs because that's where the interaction takes place. If interaction is not taking place, that means that environment is not there. The potential for growth is very, very low. A single person, yeah, very quickly. Because maybe some people are theoretical, not from lab like me. Yeah. So when I entered in the PhD, my advisor said, I have collaborator coming from France. You come on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I was like, I know nothing about the research topic, so it was just a life problem they were solving. Mm -hmm. I was sitting like this. I hope they will not ask anything. So I know nothing, but I just feel the research that how they are doing, how they are taking coffee, when they are taking, when they are solving the field of happiness, when they solve some equation on the computer. So I was just sitting. Sit. Yeah. That's it. So I really feel. Exactly. So here is an example where there is no lab, but it is the interaction that is very important your interaction. Even if you get a chance to listen to somebody telling something, discussing, those discussions are very important. Anyway, be in the lab from day one. Take your courses from day one you are taking. Your immediate goal is comprehensive exam. But for two months, do this exercise of reading regarding the topic. It is very, very, very important. Now you have formed a base. This is the time for you to write a page or two, maximum. That's it. A page or two on the status of research in the area that you are in. OK? And then you can also write towards the end at least seven or eight topics about which you saw research in your area, which you found very interesting and cutting edge. Prepare this sheet, one pager, both sides, maximum. Prepare this sheet and keep it as your first step towards preparing what? Research proposal. This is your first step. Now, can you have a conversation with your boss? Yes. You are informed. You will not be a dumb person sitting in front of the boss and telling that, OK, I, uh, please tell me what should I do. No. Never let it be decided by someone else. Be a partner. PhD is a partnership. PhD is what you want to do. Maybe it is not right, but at least then the supervisor will take one step back and say, aha, uh -huh, good. 
he will he or she will feel very happy that the student is informed has read and it is much easier after that to be able to take the next step but this is not semester 2 this is not semester 3 this is semester 1 this is semester 1 this is reality start on the right foot not on the wrong foot okay you have to do it now when you have those discussions actually the professor might say you know what good you prepared all this thing I really like the ideas that you have come up with but you know what in our lab we are doing this thing but your research was already planned in such a way that you have identified what is being done in the lab and accordingly you were doing the research and then the topics can start emerging four or five topics can come in play for discussion now the question is should you pick one of them and start writing after discussion with the professor no I will not recommend that to you maybe the professor say you know what this is doable let's go for it but I always take that as plan A I should always have it in my hip pocket plan B and plan C there is never a guarantee in PhD research that plan A works never a guarantee there are only 10% chances when plan A works there are 50% chances that plan C works so be prepared now how to be prepared about it pick up the top two three topics and start repeating this exercise again okay now now you don't have a, a big broad spectrum of things that you need to do instead you have got four or five topics to focus on and then for each of those topic again start exactly the same way three piles for this three piles for this three piles for this three piles. and you will say how much should I study it's too much but PhD is too much believe me PhD is too much if you want to do it good if you want to do it good one thing I want to tell you that you will never regret never regret that you had so many piles you will actually after one and a half year you will be so strong and you will be thrilled that I have all the papers that I need almost not all but almost all the papers that I need for writing a review the treasure right so let's say four or five topics 25 articles for each topic you suddenly have around 125 to 150 articles you have reviews direct relevance correlated talks suddenly whatever topic can finally be picked and developed into a proposal a thesis proposal you have it you have every article that you need you have it then you can have discussion how would, you, how would you start writing a proposal then? Let's, let's get to that. Let's get to that. How would you start writing a proposal? Look to the guidelines. Sorry? Look to the guidelines. Guidelines. What are the guidelines? Start with the literature. Size and, uh, Sorry? Start with the literature. Start with the literature review. Okay. Then go to the hypothesis. Uh, and one, 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 one at a time. I'll point out, okay? Yeah, sorry, finish. You start with the literature review, what is already done, yeah. and then you state your hypothesis, like how is your work, again, a compensate for something that is missing from the literature review, mm -hmm. and then you just start with your ideas, uh, proposed methods, materials, and outcomes. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, you need also to write the problem statement, mm -hmm. the of objective, mm -hmm. and uh, proposal of review, mm -hmm. and then you need as they say, literature review, mm -hmm. and you need also to write uh, uh, methodology you're going to use, and the uh, passion or the uh, motivations mm -hmm. and the innovation in your uh, Also, what you need as a resources. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 
also we need to uh, write the limitations or the challenges you could face. And also you need to, to have a conclusion. Timeline. 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 Also, maybe some preliminary results if you have started. Yeah, that, that's also good. Good. I think so. Basic, basic uh, uh, framework of a proposal, or, I mean, it's standard, right? It's a standard proposal that needs to be put over there. But for your own sake, writing the problem statement is very, 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 very important. That's where you begin. This will be the problem that I will solve. This will be what I will achieve through doing this particular research. This will be the focus of my PhD. Okay? So that problem statement, from where will you get? Now you have done this, this, this uh, literature review for almost 150 articles, let's say you have a very clear idea that what are the problems, you already picked them. That problem statement is there. The next thing you need to do is justify yourself. Rationale. You have a problem. You have, you say that I will find a solution for it. Justify it. Why do you want to do it? And that justification is very, very important. Not just for yourself, but to stand in front of your professor and able to defend it. But also eventually you will have to defend it in front of the committee. And eventually you will have to defend it when you defend your PhD. This justification and this problem statement have to be very, very clear in your mind. Because it clearly says <coughs> This is what I want to achieve. Here is a problem. This is the solution I am coming up with. And PhD should be not just a repetition of thing, but it should be a problem. It should be a solution. Yes, ma'am. And even it shows that you are in position among the other literature review and articles. And it shows that. Can you repeat that again, please? It even when you identify the, pro the statement of problem and even the rationale, it shows your position among the articles. That was a very important thing. Studies. And it shows even the significance of the study and what kinds of contribution you are going to add beside the previous literature. Very good, very good. In other words, I'm, I'm rephrasing just what she said. You have stated a problem, and in justification, what you do? The gap analysis. Okay? And by saying that gap analysis, you are making a huge statement. You are saying, this thing is missing. Literature does not talk about it. Literature does not provide any solution about it. And that is the reason why I want to engage in this type of work and provide the solution. Very good. That was very, very, very important. That's the important part of the justification. That justification is not just I, I want to do it because I love doing it, but I'm doing it because it is, there's a huge gap regarding that information. And once this gap is filled, this information gap is filled, I will be able to find solution to the problem which will be useful to... Now, your work always has to be useful to not you for your PhD degree, but it has to be useful to the scientific community to begin with, to begin with, okay? But eventually, it should be useful to humanity. At the end of the day, it should be useful to humanity. Okay? And when I, when I say useful to humanity, that means if I bifurcate it a little bit more, it should be either useful to the industry, to become something commercial, or it should be useful to the community to make things easier, simpler, better. So when you are writing your justification, keep these things in mind. Many people just ignore them. 90% of the proposals that I read, I say, why are you doing it? 
and there's always a grin or, or, or uh, well, I, I don't know. Because this was, I, I saw in the literature, there are so many, uh, so much uh, talking about it, so I picked it. No. Okay, problem statement, justification, injustification, gap analysis, impact. Impact of your work is very, very important. Right in those two small paragraphs, you've done your job. You have set the stage. Whosoever will read it, buy it immediately. If you have not got, done a good job, it goes into the dustbin right away. But if you have prepared that, then you have set the stage. This is just the beginning. Then comes the next part, which probably you mentioned, literature review. Okay? But even before literature review, you can, you can do a couple more things for yourself. Of course, you prepare the proposal as is designed. But uh, okay, let's let's go to the lit literature review because you have accumulated so much data regarding that particular topic. Start putting it into a string. That uh, and that string should be like a story. It should not be bland. It should not be uh, boring. It should not be. Um, just that you copy and paste it. Plagiarism is a separate thing, we can talk about it separately. But it should be a thought process that is put into literature review. A lot of people think, you know what? I will write the literature review by picking this article, that article, that article, that article, taking things from here and there, putting it together, that's literature review. No. Trust me, literature review is a very intelligent thought process where you pick up the beads from here and there and make a beautiful necklace out of it. Think about it that way. And the easiest way is before writing literature review, just sit down and say that what you want to say first in the literature, what you want to say next in the literature, what you want to say next in the literature. And the most important thing, this sequence of events should be such that it starts when the, the reader should start feeling that oh, oh, oh okay there is a gap there is a gap there is a gap and towards the end the last paragraph should be clearly the literature says that there is a gap so you should make a conclusion statement at the end of literature review where you are able to say that there is a gap of information which does not mean that the whole literature review should be that there is gap here, there is gap here. No. Literature review is acknowledging that this work has been done. This was very important. The outcome is this. This work has been done. Very important. The outcome is this. But slowly, slowly, at the end of the each paragraph that you have for literature review, there should be a summary line, which I call a synthesis, where you yourself give a summary very good this work was done, but information is lacking regarding this thing. Okay? And then you provide a summary paragraph saying, which connects to your justification where you clearly write that you know, now I have identified there is a huge gap. Some people think literature review is just accumulating whatever has been done now. No. Literature review is in other form what I say as making your case. Through literature review, you are making your case for your work. Making your case for the problem that you have stated that you want to tackle for your PhD. So literature review is not just putting together things. It is supporting what you want to do. Because from that you have picked out, this is missing and this is what I want to do. Okay? <coughs> and that is the time when you start saying that now my long-term goal in this particular project, which is a thesis, right? 
PhD is this and these are my objectives. So now you start making the statement that this is what the, the literature review says this and here are the information missing and immediately come to the statement that this is what I want to do. Why? So that I can full, fulfill that gap. I can fill that gap and provide that information. And that information will be provided through objectives A, B, C and another maximum D. Typically, I recommend that take only three objectives, not more. If you have five objectives, try to put them together, club them together into three major objectives. That should ha that's how concise, composed, consolidated it should be. Three clear objectives. Fourth one is added only and only if it is a necessity. Okay? And once these objectives are set, that you have said that A, B, and C will be done, just sit down again for a day on it. Sleep on it. And see that by doing this, am I really filling the gap for which I am <coughs> promising I will do? Okay? Are these objectives really connecting to the gap analysis I have done? Are these objectives really tying to solve the problem that I have stated right in the beginning? And that is a very reflective thing. Don't take it easy. Think very seriously about it. Also do at the same time is give it to your peers to read. Give it to your colleagues to read. If they understand what is written, that means you are on the right track. If they don't understand what is written, then there is a problem. Then you cannot. Okay? And once you have done that, then the next step comes is, then you start drafting the framework for uh, the materials and methods. And here you will have to sit down with your supervisor. Each objective has to have certain experiments associated with it. Okay? Hypothesis associated with it. And that should be then forming the basis of this is how materials and methods will be developed. And once those materials and methods will be developed, next comes, you don't have any results, okay? So what will you do? You write potential outcomes or deliverables, okay? From these set of experiments for objective one, these two experiments will be done this will be the potential outcome. Objective two, these experiments will be done, this will be the potential outcome. Three, these experiments will be done, this will be the potential outcome. So suddenly you have the outcome in front of you, the deliverables in front of you, right? And they are needed. The next very important thing is to write what are the potential obstructions or difficulties you might face when you will do this type of work. It's very important because plan A is good but there has to be a plan B. Or you should accept already in the beginning that I might encounter this difficulty and these are the potential solutions. So potential obstructions and its solutions, they should be very clearly written out. And then the last part is the overall outcomes and impact of the work and outcome and impact should be so good that whosoever reads it says wow this is really a PhD this will really add some value to the scientific community this will really be some you should feel that because once you start feeling it then you will feel that okay yes I have something now I'm asking you to do at least three to four such activities for yourself. And when you have these three to four activities, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, nobody will ever be able to stop you from moving forward confidently.
because proposals have to be developed not after comprehensive exam. You have to start this process already in the first semester. By the end of the first semester, you actually should have an idea of where you are going. By the end of the second semester, you should have at least two or three such proposals ready. Two or three such proposals ready by the end of the second semester. Third semester is for polishing it. Third semester is for sharing it. Third semester is for getting criticism and comments on it. And that is the only way you can have your proposal submitted before your comprehensive exam. And think that if you have that done before your comprehensive exam, you are not nervous. You are ready to take PhD by its horns. Okay? Otherwise, PhD will take you by its horns. <laughs> right? For how many of you it is happening like that? It is happening. It is happening. But keep this thing in mind. PhD proposal is never for to be done later. PhD proposal, the whole process starts today, now. For those of you who have already spent a year and have not started with their PhD proposal, I beg you to do that, this exercise, and do it in a really speedy way. Then you will be able to have a good discussion with your professor about what you want to do. Then you can get your way. Typically what happens? If you are informed, and like I said last time, if you are two steps ahead of your professor, the professor will respect you, the professor will listen to you, the professor will try to do things what you want to do, and you will do what you like to do. On the other hand, if you, will, if you are not prepared, the professor will say, take this and go and do it whether you like it or not, and 90% of the chances you don't like it. You will do it because the professor is saying that you do it. Never take PhD like that. Never. You should be in command seat in PhD. You are the driver. It is your baby. Give time to it. If you are rearing a baby, you have to give time to it. Okay? Questions? <coughs> Did it make sense to you? Yes. Did it depress you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, if it depressed you, that's okay because I wanted it. It's necessary that, oh my God, I'm not doing this? That's good. Yes? If you do a session, yeah. and after like one year, and you found yourself that this topic is not mature enough to be a PhD, mm -hmm. and you decide to teach Mm -hmm. Is this the right thing, or you just stick with what you say in the research proposal? Okay, can anybody answer that question? You can change it, I think it's, it's, it's not submitted. We can polish. We can, we can modify. modify. We can have submitted. Okay, he says he has submitted. I think we have to stick with it's submitted because it has worth of PhD. In other words, how it can be submitted? Oh, sometimes it happens that uh, suddenly some obstacle comes and... and, uh, and uh, you discover that you haven't read all the papers. So you find something new that's been... You haven't that. read all the papers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it happens. It happens. It happens. Maybe you find one paper that says the same things you did. Yeah. So it's... So it, it's useless to continue with this objective since it's been done. Let, let me put it the same thing in a slightly different way, okay? You are halfway through your PhD. <laughs> Suddenly you find a paper that is published on the work that you are doing. We are not here to support people, okay? <laughs> we are not here to support people. We want people to support us. <laughs> Have that attitude always in your, in your mind. Okay? But this happens. Okay? What to do then? Add new dimensions. Why did I tell you to read all those papers and have 
one more proposal and one more proposal. Why am I asking you to do four times the work which you really want to do only one? Because if something happens, you have more elements to draw from. If you did not make those four proposals, you have only one, you are limited, and you are nervous. So never get nervous. If you have a, a, a small spectrum, you can pick from here, you can pick from here, and at the same time, you don't stop reading literature, okay? Don't, don't take me wrong when I said that you have got 150 papers and that's the end of it. No, 2019 is still three months away and 2020 will come and 2021 will come. So literature will keep growing and you have to keep catching. And there you might suddenly find something that has something totally new that has come up. Yes. And you want to take a ride on it. That's the way. So, That's what you need to do. So, so should I uh, request for changing the or adding any elements or what shall I do? You can add elements. So those are modifications. So th those are addendums. And they, they are easily accepted. But if you're changing the whole proposal, yes. of course, your committee has to discuss uh, this thing. But it is quite normal thing because it is a misnomer. It's a myth that once the proposal is made, it is etched in stone. No. Never. Even when I, I, I submit a research proposal, it got funded. I started doing the work. Halfway through, I realized in Texas that somebody in Germany yes. published it. Yes. Doomed. No, I gather myself and suddenly find a new angle to it. So in PhD, it's exactly the same. Immediately huddle together, get with your committee, sit down. But before going to the committee, you should have something in your hand to be able to talk about. Else, the committee will dictate the terms. And as much as I, I, I respect the committee a lot, their opinion a lot, their experience a lot, I always want you to be the persons telling the committee, you know what, this is what I would like to add to my profile. And, and that matters a lot. Yes, changes can be made. Yes, ma'am. It's very much relevant today and you're basing your ideas. Maybe by the time you graduate, it's kind of out of fashion. Mm -hmm. It's not relevant or something like that. Mm -hmm. So how do you avoid getting into that? Uh, for example, you say you have, we had to re read all the literature from 2019 onwards. But mm -hmm. the thing that you want to do must, be, must have been like done five years behind. Like you have a lot of literature, but not the recent ones. Because people are not doing that anymore. OK, so, OK, OK. Uh, one thing, word of caution over here, which I should say, I took you only three years back, which does not mean that previous years are not important. Every year is important after that. And you will get a lot of that information from the review articles and other articles, directly related articles. So this is like a, a, you become a, 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 how to say, a, CIA spy who keeps on looking back, 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 back and identifying all the papers. So that thing needs to be done. So you should be aware of last 50 years actually. Anything related, okay? Yeah, you can laugh about it, but it's a necessity, you should know. Now regarding what she said, you know what? When I wrote my PhD, I was all excited. The day I finished my PhD and uh, I was getting ready to defend it, I suddenly felt, oh my God, this is nothing. And it's out of fashion. Yes. What to do? You did what was necessary to be done during that time frame. So you did a great job. If you feel bad about it, take it positively. Why? Because then immediately you're thinking of what next? PhD is just a small whistle stop. I call it a whistle stop. Because four years of work, done, finished, over, move. And when you move from here, where do you move? 
a lot of people do the mistake of keeping on playing the same music which is not in fashion anymore. Okay? Never do that. Never ever keep on working on your PhD related projects after finishing the PhD. Unless, unless something has come out of it which has got huge value. Because there are always spin-offs. So spin-offs from PhD, very good. They are very important. But PhD is a very narrow window. Your horizon should be that wide. And from here you stand and you are able to look around and then you pick and choose what more I can add to my profile. And that's what postdoc is all about. If you think PhD is a slavery, I guarantee you postdoc is a bonded labor. <laughs> Okay? <laughs> you are making us all friends. We were thinking after PhD we will try. <laughs> no, PhD will have, you will get rudimentary wings and then people will make you fly to do their jobs, okay? But you know, postdoc is a wonderful learning experience and postdoc has to be twice as difficult as your PhD. It has to be. But they are not stressful at all. Where? Postdoc people. Postdoc? Where? Wherever they are. I see post no, 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 no. That means they are. I, I'm sorry, I don't want to make a statement. Please, they get a good supervisor. <laughs> I don't want to make a statement. The stress is related to PhD, not with postdoc. No, 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 no. The stress is everywhere in life. Yeah, maybe you get it. Whatever you do, there's stress. No, postdoc post has to be really, it is the most creative time of your life. Postdoc is a very creative time. So that's why I say PhD, yes, you feel slaves, but just wait. Be ready to be bonded labor. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you are a PhD student and at the same time a research assistant, how do you uh, balance the two in terms of your time? You have two legs? <laughs> So how many hours do you work for your hour uh, Six. Six hours. How many time, How many hours every day you work for your PhD? <laughs> <laughs> I have one question. Just a second. Actually, it depends. You see, <laughs> she's doing a PhD, <laughs> and it depends. I'd like to add more on this one. Okay, quickly. It's, uh, it's like this: if she is an RA and she's doing a project mm -hmm. on any funded project, is that is the same for your PhD research title as well or not? No. Um, it's not like exactly the same, but then your thesis should come from the whole project. Whole project. So yeah. it's the same thing. Not, not no, not the same thing. Part, part, part. Okay, okay. okay. Let, let me answer you. PhD is such a stage where if you're not investing at least 12 to 16 hours every day, including weekends, I'm sorry to say that you're not doing a PhD. Let, let me also give you an example. Uh, last time some of you were here, I told that for my boss, I was writing proposals, right? Nice. I told you that. Was that my job? No. I was reviewing his articles. Was that my job? No. What I did not tell you, I was doing two more jobs. One was I was maintaining the whole lab, cleaning it. I was also the person who used to repair the instruments if they were broken. And at the same time, I was managing, as a PhD student, I was managing two postdocs and three other PhD students. It took me 16 hours every day. And on weekends, I did really focused on my job, or actually my work started when almost everybody was leaving the lab around 5 o'clock. That's when my, my experiments started. That's when I focused. That's when I sat down and read. So how many years? 
Free. <laughs> okay. So we'll do it in six years. <laughs> so don't don't tell yourself that I have got a limitation of time. Don't tell me that. You have to you have to be good managers of your time. Why are you here? Okay, good. You have a RA job. It supports you. But it supports your PhD also at the same time. But ask yourself every day, why am I here to do my PhD? And I want to do it good. Six hours is never good enough. And I, I guarantee you one thing, as an RA, in between you have time. I know that. Don't guess so much. <laughs> and if you don't, then it is only six of the 24 hours. Okay? You still have plenty of hours. Okay, I'll give you five hours to sleep and two hours to cook. Okay? Now, find, the way, find a way how to, how to manage your time. It's very important. And especially in such cases where people have got dual jobs. Yes, ma'am. Yep. What specific aspects of the of, of our proposal usually the committee focus or stress on the most? Every little bit. Most frequently and commonly. Specific I aspects will, they care about much more than the other. You don't need to think about what is you see, this is this is this is this is quite interesting. <laughs> this is like after you have taught a class and then the first trimester exam comes and then you ask the professor, uh, can you tell us what is more important and what should I read? I as a teacher always wondered, why did I spend the whole class telling you so many things? There is nothing in, the, in a PhD proposal that is not important. Nothing. Every word you write is important. Feel it. Can I say the question in another way? Yep. Um, uh, while we are standing for the defense, what are the critical points that we are should include in the proposal so it will be accepted and submitted successfully? The elements that I talked about, if you have all those elements, nobody can stop them. Okay. I guarantee you this thing. If you put all these elements, nobody will st ever stop you. The questions that are important, is your first thing, uh, the, the problem, is that properly prepared? Is your justification there? Is your literature review put in such a way that it leads to that place? Are your objectives clear? Are your methodology that you are proposing, the experiments, are they clear? If all those things are clear and your impact and outcomes are properly done and your time frame, which I forgot to mention in details, if all those things are clear, every part is important. Every part is important. I really cannot say that this is less and this is more. Take every part as very important part in the thesis proposal. It will give you confidence that everything is important. Okay? Don't, don't miss on anything. Even when you come for a defense, you should know your proposal inside out. Okay? You should know it inside out. Anybody else? Okay, we're done then. Thank you very much.